I'd like to thank you for joining us for our first ever I Devotion presented by the ministry of Graceway Church in Oprah. Our overriding theme is that you understand the Bible. Because if we understand the Bible, we're going to be able to share it confidently wherever it is that we live, work, and play. The theme of our church is Are You Fit? F-I-T. So we want people to be fit spiritually, and we want people to be fit physically, because the Bible says we're to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are God's. So are you fit means, are you fit with a faith that influences today, where you live, work, and play with the gospel in a powerful way? That's what we're about. And that's what we want to share with you. So to get this going, I just want to share with you, and I can only give you tidbits of time, and I want you to kind of digest this. And I'll upload the PowerPoint with this. But we're going to just go over a few points today to set the basis for our Bible study. And I want you to know why I'm going to ask you to use the King James Bible. And I'm going to walk through a few things here. I am not King James only. However, I only use the King James. I do believe an English Bible can be written today that's reliable other than the King James if they use the right copies of the original text. That's the key. It's very important that we use the copies of the original text that haven't been corrupted. The originals don't exist anymore. And God promised to preserve His words from this generation forever. In Psalm 12, 6 and 7. So the miracle of inspiration, now I understand this, the miracle of inspiration is God gave us the Bible from nothing. He, he breathed supernaturally in men using their personalities to write His words down originally. And they had to, either they wrote them down or they had someone with them that wrote them down. But over time, the originals, they don't exist anymore. So, the Bible was being copied over and over and over again so that we would have it preserved. Now, you have to understand that the copies of the originals are basically in two houses, Antioch, Syria, and Alexandria, Egypt. Egypt's always a picture of sin in the Bible. You're not supposed to go to Egypt unless God tells you to, like He did with Jesus at one time. So, you have these two houses, and there's only been three world languages. Hebrew, Greek, English. Only three. Right now, English is the world language. And the Word of God has been preserved accurately in every one of those languages. When the time came that God knew that the world language was going to move from Greek to English, he began setting in motion, and I have a uh, paper that I wrote tracing all this information. And if you want it, just email me at mdharrell, H-A-R-R-E-L-L-1, at bellsouth.net, and I'll, I'll get that to you. So, Because I, I want you to know why I use the King James. I'm just not some guy up here that says, you know, I'm King James only, and you can't get saved unless you use the King James, and all that kind of stuff. I, no, that's not me. I have common sense approach to the preservation of the Word of God. I believe you can read any Bible you want. But when you study the Bible, it does matter which Bible you use because they don't all take you to the same place. As hopefully I'll be able to get to an illustration of that um, in either this video or the next video. Because I only want to go 15 minutes on these videos. So, you had three world languages. And when the world language was changing from Greek to English, God began, even before then, God began setting in motion bridges where the Word of God could be preserved accurately into the English language so that any language in the world that needed a Bible in their language could get one accurately and reliable from preserved texts. The issue are the texts from which we get our Bibles. I don't care what language it is. The issue is the text from which we get our Bibles, not the version. The versions are not the issue. It's the text from which the versions are written. And I believe from my uh, 
much time spent in research. It's researching the Alexandrian text, you can Google it, and research the Antioch text, and see the men who had their hands on these texts, the ungodly men who had their hands on the Alexandrian text, and the godly men who had their hands on the Antioch text. So for the Old Testament, we use the MT, the Masoretic text. No one questions that. There's not a big issue about the Old Testament. Although many versions use the Septuagint and Alexandrian portions, and, and um, there's, there's differences in those um, versions. If they use something other than the MT, the Masoretic text. The New Testament in the King James is written from the Received text. The Received text. Erasmus, basically, was the one who put this together... He rejected the Alexandrian texts, and he used the Antioch text for the transmission of the um, New Testament from the Greek um, to the English. So, we use the Erasmus text from the transmission of the Greek to the English. The Greek New Testament from Erasmus is the one we use. So, that's my basis for why I use the King James and why I want us to be on the same page. Now, as we go through these Bible studies, you can use any Bible you want, and that may be a good thing because you'll be able to see the differences. In fact, the, the first couple we have here, if you use in another Bible other than the King James, um, you'll see the difference. So, let's, let's get into this Bible study real quick so that we can um, get this thing going. Now, on the screen, you see learning how to understand the Bible, we're going to use the stories of the Bible. In the in next coming weeks, you're, I'm going to start with like Adam and Eve, and I'm going to go through the Bible and use the stories. And I'm going to show you how to study the Bible accurately, and how to understand what God wants us to learn from the stories of the Bible. What does God want us to learn from Adam and Eve? What does He want us to learn from the tree of life? What does He want us to learn from the fruit of the tree, and what, what happened with that? What does He want us to learn from Samson um, and... and um, uh, uh, Delilah. What does he want to learn from David and Goliath? What does God want us to learn in these stories for you and I today? How does it apply today? The battle with David and Goliath and the five smooth stones and everything that happened in that conflict, what does God want us to know and how can we accurately know that we're um, interpreting it correctly for today? So we're, that's what we're going to do. So in the course of the videos, I will ask certain questions. I'll ask you to turn off the video, discuss the questions with whomever you may have in your group. If you don't have anybody in your group, you can just go forward. And then when you turn it back on, I'll explain how to view that passage from a biblical perspective. And we'll close them off each week that way. So, the first thing I want to show, share with you in these brief minutes I have is why I use the King James Bible. And I'm not King James Bible only, and I explain that. I only use the King James because of the texts that are being used for transmission, but I'm not King James only. I do believe a reliable Bible other than the King James could be written, although one has not been written yet. One could be written if they use the MT for the Old Testament and the RT for a word-for-word -word translation, such as if I'm translating the Bible into a, a language in Africa and I get to the verse, Though your sins be white as snow. They don't know what snow is. They've never seen snow. So I would probably use like soap bubbles. Though your sins be as snow bubble, as a scarlet. Though your sins uh, be as scarlet, they shall be as white as soap bubbles. But I need to make sure that every time I use that word snow, I use soap bubbles. So I can cross-reference it. Because one of the rules of Bible study are comparing Scripture with Scripture. You have to leave words in context. So That's what the Bible says. You can't just change a word randomly so that people can understand it. It has to be kept in context so you can cross-reference and understand the whole principle. So, I'm going to let the Bible today show you what the Bible wants you to understand about the Bible itself. Psalm 12, 6, and 7. You can look it up in your own Bible if you want to. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. 
Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So what is being preserved in the King James Bible are the words. And if you have another Bible or you look up other Bibles, what is being preserved in those Bibles are people. So the greatest verse, passage on the preservation of the Word of God, preservation of the inspired Word, so that we can know what we have today is what God wanted us to have. The, the miracle of preservation is just as important as the miracle of inspiration. That's where I'm coming from in these devotions. That's where I'm coming from in these videos. This is what makes what we do here unique. We believe that God Almighty gave us the Word of God from nothing, inspiration, and was powerful enough to preserve the inspired Word exactly the way He wanted it to, every word exactly the way He wanted it to, because of the passages we're getting ready to read. So the Word not be confusion. So God could be a holy and righteous judge. Because if He changes words and it, and it changes meaning, he can't hold us accountable for something that we don't know is 100% reliable. Psalm 35 and 6, Proverbs, I'm sorry, Proverbs 35 and 6. Every word of God is pure. Every word. Not every phrase, not every idea. Every word is pure. He is a shield. So many cross referencings here. A shield. The word of God is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. I trust the Word of God. I trust God preserved it. I trust it's exactly why, the way He wanted me to have it. And it gives me confidence. Verse 6, Add thou not unto these words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Pretty powerful, I would say. Don't add to them. God is the only one that has the right to add to His words if He wants to do that, or take away from His words if He wants to do that. So remember, the principle we're looking at here is the miracle of inspiration and the miracle of preservation are great miracles. And one is not more important than the other one. It says, if you mess with it, you'll be found a liar. Revelation 22, for, verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these words, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, we can talk about what that last part means, but what we're focusing on here is, he's saying don't mess with the words. God is the only one that has, a scholar doesn't have a, um, an okay from God to mess with his words just so they can make it understandable, and the cash registers can go ka -ching. That's not who has the authority to do that. God had the authority to do that, and He's already done that. And he's done it through the Masoretic text in the Old Testament, and He's done it through the Received text in the New Testament. So just use those forms, and we have the reliable Bible. Verse 19, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So the key there we're focusing on, he says, Don't add to them, and don't take away from it. Luke 4.4, 4, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by by bread alone, but by every word, not by every paraphrase, not by every idea, by every word of God. Proverbs 8.8, 8, All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, there is nothing for to perverse in them. Verse 9, They are all plain to him that understandeth. We want you to understand the word of God. And if we're all constantly changing the words of God with this idea that we want to try to make it understandable to people, then what we really do is dumb it down, we lose the cross-referencing, and we lose the ability to understand what God wants us to know because the true teacher of the word of God is the Holy Spirit. If you are a, a person who is, possesses the Holy Spirit of God and you have a, the Word of God that's been preserved from the inspired manuscripts, you have everything that you need to understand the Word of God because they're, they're called the keys of David. God said that He opens so that no man can shut and He shuts it so no man can open. And what does that mean? It means if you are right with God, the Word of God is open to you and no man can shut it. But if you're not right with God, the Word of God is shut to you understanding, and no man can open it. That's the key. Believing that God loved His Word enough that He would preserve it. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. Why? That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Why is it so important not to add or take away from it? Because 
He wants us to live according to His principles. And when you change the words, you change the meanings, and that is semantics. If you change the word for another language, make sure you keep that word in context throughout, like snow to soap bubbles. Don't change the context of the passage. Don't change the words where the semantics are changed. The importance is the last part of that verse in Deuteronomy, or the middle part, that ye shall not add it to the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. Why? That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Wow! Why is it that we have Christian groups going Psh, every which way? Why do we have doctrine and Christian churches going Psh, every which way? Why do we have so many denominations going Psh, every which way? Because we, we've allowed Satan to mess with the Word of God. We can't find agreement on our basis, the Word of God. The only things in this life that will last forever is the soul of men and the Word of God. And we've allowed Satan to mess with the Word of God. The next video, I'm going to give you an illustration on what Satan did with Adam and Eve in terms of messing with the Word of God and how he's not changed that plan throughout the ages. Psalm 138, verse 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Keep that word truth in mind. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Important. Why has God magnified the word above his name? Why? If you want to, shut off the video right now and discuss that. Why has God magnified his word above his name? Okay, the reason God has magnified His Word above His name is because if you change the Word, you change who Jesus is. I'm going to show you in the coming weeks how He's done that through the name Lucifer, through the term Son of the Morning, through the term Morning Star, through the term Day Star. And we have versions of the Bible that call Jesus our enemy and call our enemy Jesus by the, myth, by the improper use of those terms, sun of the morning, morning star, and day star. And even taking Lucifer out of the Bible altogether. The only time it's ever mentioned in the Bible, it's taken out and replaced with the name Jesus, so our enemy becomes Jesus. And I'll show you that. And it's just a reason why I use the King James. I'm just explaining today why I use it and what my basis for that is. You can go through these videos and not use the King James, but I believe by the time you go through a good portion of them, you'll say, yeah, you know, it makes sense that the Word of God is preserved through the received text and the MT. John 17, 17, that word truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. What is truth? It is personal opinion truth? It is popular opinion truth? It is the majority truth? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Boom. This is the this is the worldwide truth. This is the universal truth. This is truth. I don't care who says this isn't true, this is true. If history disagrees with the word of God, the word of God will in time be proven out to be true. If science disagrees with the word of God in time, science will be disproven by the word of God. And it, it already happens all the time. People say that place didn't exist because we don't have any historical uh, records of it, and then boom, they find historical records. The world thought that the earth was flat. The Bible the whole time says the world is round and hangs upon nothing. Killed George Washington by taking the blood out of his body, and the Word of God says the life is in the blood. That's not only a picture of Jesus Christ, that's just common sense. 2 Corinthians 2.17, For we are not as many... And people do this on purpose, and some people do this ignorantly. And I don't mean that word stupid, it just means unlearned. They haven't learned what the proper procedure is for understanding the Bible yet. It's like me in 1996. I, I went through Christian school, Bible college, and an assistant pastor in four large churches, and I had never been discipled. In 1996, someone discipled me. So before then, I was ignorant. I had a college degree, Christian school degree. I was a successful assistant pastor, but I was ignorant. And someone set me straight in 1996. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, 
but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So we don't want to corrupt the Word of God. We want to believe that God inspired it from nothing and preserved it from something. He has, he has that even preserved today. Isaiah 40 and verse 8, The grass withereth, the flower, flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. 1 Timothy 4, 6, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, the word of God, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith. So the word of God is preserved so we can nourish people. We're nourished up in the words of faith. It won't bring um, disagreement. It will, it will bring agreement. We are nourished up in the words of faith and a good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. Doctrine is just proper teaching. That's all it is. It's not scholastic mumbo-jumbo. Doctrine is just proper teaching. 1 Peter 1.23 Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 25 But the word of the Lord endureth forever. All of it. Exactly the way God wanted it. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. John 12. 47 and 48. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him. It's the words that are being used here in judgment. God has preserved his word. He's inspired it. He's preserved it exactly the way he wanted it to. Because one day people are going to be judged by it. They will be getting rewards as believers or they'll be cast into hell and the lake of fire as unbelievers. And his word is what judges God would be unfaithful if His Word was not exactly the way He wanted it in every language that we could put it in, in every period of time in history. His Word is what is judging. I judge Him not, for He came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same. The same as the words. The same shall judge him in the last day. The word of God does the judging. When Jesus comes and he has a sword coming out of his mouth in Revelation chapter 19, that's not a physical sword coming out. It's a picture of the word of God. The word of God is doing the battling. The word of God is doing the defeating. The word of God is doing the fighting. 1 Timothy 6.3 if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud. If a person's not going to consent to the preserved word of God, he's proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Dude, that's what's happening in our churches today. Because people can't find agreement on the Word of God, they're doting about questions and strives of words. Whereof comes envy, strife, railings, envies, envies, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. What's the truth? The Word. Sanctified by them by that Word, the Word is truth. Disposing that gain is godliness. He says, listen... If people are using the Word of God and they're, they're resting it and they're taking it out of context and they're using their position for fame and they're using a position for power and they're using a position for money, he says, from such withdraw. Withdraw thyself. So, that ends today. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you some examples on... Uh, and then we're going to go on to the Bible studies. The, the Bible studies. But I just want to set a basis for this. Um, the next video will show you some examples of why the Bibles, why you have to choose which one to study. You can be a Christian and have, read any Bible you want, but if you study and you want to find agreement and you want to grow and you want, want, you want to mature and you want to know the mind of Christ, this guy believes you need to choose a Bible. And I'm not just saying that. I'm going to show you why I believe that. It's so important. I'm going to give you three examples why I believe that. So um, I'm excited about these videos, and I hope you come back and you get your friends to watch these because it's going to be different. It's going to be unique, and I believe it comes from a place of, of stability and a, and a firm foundation. So thank you very much for watching uh, this ministry of Graceway Church in Oakborough. Thank you.